Admiral Edward Pellew, 1st Viscount Exmouth, GCB, the 19th of April 1757 to the 23rd of January 1833, was a British naval officer. He fought during the American War of Independence, the French Revolutionary Wars, and the Napoleonic Wars. His younger brother Israel Pellew also pursued a naval career. Topic: <laughs> Childhood Pellew was born at Dover, the second son of Samuel Pellew (1712–1764), commander of a Dover packet. The family was Cornish, descended from a family that came originally from Normandy, but had for many centuries been settled in the west of Cornwall. Edward's grandfather, Humphrey Pellew (1650–1721), a merchant and ship owner, son of a naval officer, resided at Flushing Manor House in the parish of Myler. Part of the town of Flushing was built by Samuel Trefusis, MP for Penryn. The other part was built by Humphrey Pellew, who was buried there. He also had a property and a tobacco plantation in Maryland. Part of the town of Annapolis stands on what was, before the revolt of the colonies, the estate of the Pellews. On the death of Edward's father in 1764 the family removed to Penzance, and Pellew was educated for some years at Truro Grammar School. He was a pugnacious youth, which did not endear him to his headmaster. He ran away to sea at the age of 14, but soon deserted because of unfair treatment to another midshipman. <laughs> Early career topic 1770s In 1770 Pellew entered the Royal Navy on board HMS Juno with Captain John Stott and made a voyage to the Falkland Islands In 1772 he followed Stott to the Alarm and in her was in the Mediterranean for 3 years In consequence of a high-spirited quarrel with his captain he was put on shore at Marseille where he found an old friend of his father's in command of a merchant ship he was able to get a passage to Lisbon and so home. He afterwards was in the Blonde which took General John Burgoyne to America in the spring of 1776 under the command of Captain Philemon Pownall. In October, Pellew and Midshipman Brown were detached for service in the Carlton Tender on Lake Champlain under Lieutenant Dakers. During the Battle of Valcour Island on of October, Dakers and Brown were both severely wounded, and the command devolved on Pellew. Pellew extricated the vessel from a position of great danger by his personal gallantry. As a reward for his service, he was immediately appointed to command the Carlton. In December, Lord Howe promised him a commission as lieutenant when he could reach New York, and in the following January Lord Sandwich wrote promising to promote him when he came to England. In the summer of 1777, Pellew and a small party of seamen were attached to the army under Burgoyne, and he was present in the fighting at Saratoga, where his youngest brother John was killed. He and the rest of the force were taken prisoner. After the surrender of Burgoyne at Saratoga, he was repatriated. He returned to England and was promoted on 9 January 1778 to be lieutenant of the Princess Amelia guardship at Portsmouth. He wanted to be appointed to a seagoing ship, but Lord Sandwich considered that he was bound by the terms of the surrender at Saratoga not to undertake any active service. Towards the end of the year, he was appointed to the Licorne which went out to Newfoundland in the spring of 1779, returning in the winter, when Pellew was moved into the Apollo with his old captain Pownall. On 15 June 1780, the Apollo engaged a large French privateer, the Stanislaus, off Ostend. Pownall was killed by a musket shot, but Pellew continued the action and dismasted the Stanislaus, driving her on shore where she was protected by the neutrality of the coast. On the 18th, Lord Sandwich wrote to him, I will not delay informing you that I mean to give you immediate promotion as a reward for your gallant and officer-like conduct. On 1 July, he was accordingly promoted to the command of the Hazard Sloop, which was employed for the next six months on the east coast of Scotland and was then paid off. Topic. Peacetime service In March 1782, Pellew was appointed to the Pelican, a small French prize, so small indeed that he used to say, his servant could dress his hair from the deck while he sat in the cabin. On 28 April while cruising on the coast of Brittany, he engaged three privateers and drove them on shore. 
In special reward for this service, he was promoted to post rank on 25 May and, ten days later, was appointed to the temporary command of the Artois, in which he captured a large frigate built privateer on 1 July. From 1786 to 1789, he commanded the Winchelsea frigate on the Newfoundland station, returning home each winter by Cadiz and Lisbon. Afterwards, he commanded the Salisbury on the same station as flag captain to Vice Admiral Milbank. In 1791, he was placed on half pay and tried his hand at farming on Treveri Farm near Helston, a property owned by his brother who was a senior customs officer of Flushing. This met with indifferent success, during which time he attempted to sell a bull, only to find that it was in the ownership of a neighboring farmer. The Russians offered him a command in the Russian navy but Pelu declined the offer. He was still struggling with the difficulties of his farm when the revolutionary government of France declared war on Great Britain on 1 February 1793. <laughs> Wartime service. Pelu immediately applied for a ship and was appointed to the Nymph, a 36-gun frigate which he fitted out in a remarkably short time. He had expected a good deal of difficulty in manning her and had enlisted some 80 Cornish miners who were sent round to the ship at Spithead. He put to sea with these and about a dozen seamen, plus officers—who were obliged to help in the work aloft. He filled his complement of crew by pressing from the merchant ships in the channel, but with very few seasoned navy men. On 18 June, Nymph sailed from Falmouth on the news that two French frigates had been seen in the channel. At the action of 18 June 1793, Nymph fell in with the Cleophatra, also of 36 guns and commanded by Captain Jean Mullen, one of the few officers of the ancient regime who still remained in the French Navy. After a short but very sharp action, Cleopatra's mizenmast and wheel were shot away, making the ship unmanageable, and it fell foul of the Nymph. Pelu's crew boarded her in a fierce rush and captured her. Mullen was mortally wounded, and died trying to swallow his commission which he had mistaken for the code of secret signals in his dying agony. The code thus fell intact into Pelu's hands, who sent them to the Admiralty. Cleophatra was the first frigate taken in the war and was brought to Portsmouth, and Pelu was presented to the king on 29 June by the Earl of Chatham and was knighted. Pelu transferred to Arethusa in December 1793. In 1794, Arethusa was part of the Western Squadron of Frigates based at Falmouth under Sir John Borlase Warren. On 23 April, the squadron engaged one of these to the southwest of Guernsey, the stronger British force quickly overpowering their opponents in an action where Pelu's Arethusa played the primary role in fighting the Pomon, at the time the largest frigate in service. Pomon surrendered after an engagement that lasted less than half an hour. The French had suffered between 80 and 100 casualties, Arethusa had only three dead and five wounded. Warren's squadron went on to destroy one frigate and capture another. They also drove two corvettes ashore, Alert and Espion, both of which had been Royal Navy sloops. The French later refloated Espion after Pelu refused to burn either, as they contained wounded men. The squadron also captured many vessels from French coastal convoys. Service in the French Revolutionary War By 1794, he was Commodore of the Western Frigate Squadron. In 1795, he took command of HMS Indefatigable, the ship with which he is most closely associated. The squadron also comprised the frigates HMS Argo, Concord, Revolutionnaire, and Amazon. He was a good swimmer and noted for saving the lives of several seamen who had fallen overboard. The most striking life-saving event was on 26 January 1796 when the East Indiaman Dutton was carrying more than 400 troops, together with many women and children, when it ran aground under Plymouth Hoe. Due to the heavy seas, the crew and soldiers aboard were unable to get to shore. Pelu swam out to the wreck with a line and, with help from young Irishman Jeremiah Coughlin, helped rig a lifeline that saved almost all aboard. For this feat he was created a baronet on the 18th of March 1796 on the 13th of April 1796 off the coasts of Ireland his squadron captured the French frigate Unité and the Virginie 9 days later his most noted action was the action of the 13th of January 1797 cruising in company with HMS Amazon when the British sighted the French 74 gun ship of the line Droits de Lum 
Normally, a ship of the line would overmatch two frigates, but by skillful sailing in the stormy conditions, the frigates avoided bearing the brunt of the superior firepower of the French. In the early morning of 14 January, the three ships were embayed on a lee shore in Audierne Bay. Both the droits de Lum and Amazon ran aground, but Indefatigable managed to claw her way off the lee shore to safety. Pelu was also responsible for pressing young violinist and composer Joseph Antonio Emedy, who had been playing in the Lisbon Opera Orchestra. <laughs> Admiral C and Peerage Pelu was promoted to Rear Admiral in 1804. He was appointed Commander-in-Chief of the East Indies Station. It took six months to sail out to Penang, so he took up the appointment in 1805. Following his return from the East in 1809, he was appointed to the position of Commander-in-Chief, North Sea from 1810 to 1811 and Commander-in-Chief, Mediterranean Fleet, from 1811 to 1814, and again from 1815 to 1816. In 1814, he was made Baron Exmouth of Canantane. In 1816, he led an Anglo-Dutch fleet against the Barbary States. Victory at the bombardment of Algiers secured the release of the 1,200 Christian slaves in the city. For this action, he was created first Viscount Exmouth on 10 December 1816. Following his return to England, he became Commander-in-Chief, Plymouth from 1817 to 1821, when he effectively retired from active service. He continued to attend and speak in the House of Lords. In 1832, he was appointed Vice Admiral of the United Kingdom and Admiral of the Red Squadron of His Majesty's Fleet, Knight Grand Cross of the Most Honourable Military Order of the Bath, also of the Royal and Distinguished Order of Charles III of Spain, of the Military Order of William of the Netherlands, of the Royal Sicilian Order of Saint Ferdinand and Merit, of the Military Order of Saint Maurice and Saint Lazare of Sardinia, Knight of the Most Honourable and Most Ancient Order of the Annunciation of the Royal House of Savoy, High Steward of Great Yarmouth. Smith, and one of the Elder Brethren of the Honourable Corporation of the Trinity House. He bought Bitten House in Tynemouth in 1812 and it was his home until his death in 1833. He was buried in Cristo on the eastern edge of Dartmoor on 30 January 1833. A note on the parish burial record states, No singing, no sermon. The museum in Tynemouth has a comprehensive collection of artifacts that belonged to him. Topic. Marriage and family On 28 May 1783, Pelu married Susan Frauda. They had four sons and two daughters. These children were Emma Mary Pelu the 18th of January 1785 to March 1835. Married Captain Lawrence Halsted in December 1803. Pownall Bastard Pelu, later second Viscount Exmouth, the 1st of July 1786 to the 2nd of December 1833. Julia Pelu, the 28th of November 1787 to the 26th of December 1831. Fleetwood Broughton Reynolds Pelu, later an admiral and knight, the 13th of December 1789 to the 28th of July 1861. George Pellew, Dean of Norwich, the 3rd of April 1793 to the 13th of October 1866. Edward William Pellew, later a minister, the 3rd of November 1799 to the 29th of August 1869. Topic: <laughs> Geographical namesakes. The Sir Edward Pellew group of islands situated in the Gulf of Carpentaria were named after Pellew by Matthew Flinders, who visited them in 1802. Other Australian geographical features include Cape Pellew adjacent to the islands and Exmouth Gulf. Point Pellew, Alaska was named after Pellew by Captain George Vancouver during his expedition in 1794. Palau, formerly the Pellew or Pellew Islands, east of the Philippines, is often said to be named for Edward Pellew, but it was called that by Captain Henry Wilson in 1783 which was well before Pellew came to prominence. It appears to be an anglicization of the indigenous name Balao. There is also a building named after him in HMS Raleigh, where naval basic training is conducted, that is used as sleeping quarters for new recruits. Additionally, a sea cadet unit in Truro is called T.S. Pelu. 
A building at Wyvern Barracks in Exeter, Devon is used as a temporary billet and a training facility for the Army Cadet Force as well as other units. It was handed over to the Army from the Navy. However, it retains the name Pellew House in memory of Sir Edward Pellew, 1st Viscount Exmouth. Fictional appearances Pelu is featured as the captain of Indefatigable in some of C.S. Forrester's fictional Horatio Hornblower novels. In the television adaptations, as portrayed by Robert Lindsay, he is given a more prominent role. As a midshipman, he appears in the novel Jack Absolute by Chris Humphreys. Pelu is the name of a minor character in several of Patrick O'Brien's Aubrey Maturin novels, including The Reverse of the Medal, The Surgeon's Mate, but as himself is only mentioned in The Yellow Admiral and The Hundred Days. As a captain, he has a small role in the American Revolution in Rabble in Arms, an historical novel by Kenneth Roberts. He appears in Alexander Kent's Adam Bolitha novel, Relentless Pursuit, which partially relates to Pelu's expedition against the Barbary states. His service in the American Revolution is mentioned on page 354 of Diana Gabaldon's An Echo in the Bone, which is part of the Outlander series. <laughs> Notes <laughs>